For this week's video, I want to talk about sailboat safety. So this past week, the last week of April of 2023, a Precision 18 was lost sailing on a river in North Carolina. And of the about 800 Precision 18s that were manufactured, this is the second known sinking of a Precision 18. The first case was in 2011 on the Chesapeake. And the circumstances of the sinking, both of those were very similar. Um, the boat was sailing along, was hit by a very heavy, unexpected gust, the boat capsized, and then filled with water and sank. But in both cases, the captains made some mistakes and the loss could have been prevented. So today I'm gonna to talk about five things. Situational awareness, sail controls, weather helm, crew placement, and prep. We all know that being out on the water comes with certain risks. And for example, in Colorado, 2022 was the worst year on record for water recreation deaths. So when we're out there, we need to maintain situational awareness at all times. And so that's the kind of the awareness of the environment around us and what's going on in that environment at all times. So things that we need to look for, you know, weather, right? So we need to be looking for clouds developing. We need to look for storm fronts coming in. Um, and just keeping an eye on what the weather is doing around us while we're out on the water. And that includes looking behind us once in a while, because it's very easy to be caught from behind if, if you're not kind of watching what's going on. So, you know, when you're out sailing, um, you always have to be looking at the water surface, because the water surface will give you clues as to what the wind is doing. And so like at my lake, you can literally see white caps just coming down the lake toward you. Um, and you know you've got about, you know, maybe 15 or 30 seconds to do whatever you're gonna do to get ready for that. And so, you know, you always have to be looking at the water surface. You know, are there areas where, you know, it's dark, where you can see gusts coming, things like that, um, to maintain that situational awareness at all times. Next is sail controls. And you know, it's obvious that in a wind powered vessel, how your sails are set is gonna be pretty important to how the boat performs and what it does when it gets hit by say, like a gust. Um, so, you know, probably the number one thing is the main sheet. You know, you don't wanna cleat off the main sheet when the conditions are getting rough and the boat's healing, you know, over pretty hard. You wanna have that main sheet in hand um, and be able to quickly release the main if the boat starts to go over. Um, the next thing is probably the vang. So I have learned to sail with kind of a loose vang when the winds get really gusty. Um, and what that does is it allows the boom to rise when the boat gets hit by a gust. And that increases the twist at the top of the sail and lets some of that excess air and power um, spill out. And so I found that very helpful to keeping my boat upright. Um, one of the more important controls for a heavy wind is reefing. And you don't want to wait until you know, you're over canvassed out there on the water to think about reefing. So it's a skill that needs to be practiced. You need to know how to do it. You need to know how to do it quickly. Um, and you know, when the wind picks up and the boat is overpowered, you need to start putting in those reefs. So how the sails are set, like for what point of sail is critically important. So the boat will always want to go to the condition where the sails are set. So if you're sailing, say on a broad reach, but your sails are set more for a beam reach, then the boat's going to want to go into a beam reach. Um, the boat will always try and go to where the sails are set. So if you're hit by a gust and your sails are too far in on say like a broad reach, um, then the boat's gonna very quickly go into a beam reach because as the, the wind speed doubles, the power of the wind increases exponentially. And so, you know, it's very important that you set your sails properly to the point of sail that you're on. I think most sailors understand that sailing with a little bit of weather helm is a desirable feature. And it's really, it's a kind of a safety feature that's built into the design of a boat. So if for some reason we lose control of the helm, um, the boat, because of the weather helm, will turn into the wind and go into irons. And so that helps, you know, keep us safe when we're out in the water. Um, and there's a couple reasons for this. One, you know, a lot of people will talk about the hull shape and when the boat heals, how the hull shape in the water changes and that creates weather helm. But I think an easier way to think about it is the center of effort, which is on the, you know, the wind power on the, on the sails and the mast, and then the center of hydrodynamic resistance, which is below the waterline. And so if you think about it, when the boat heals, 
the center of effort moves out, it moves to leeward, while the center of hydrodynamic resistance, or CHR, below the waterline stays roughly underneath the hull. So this creates a twist because of the separation of those two forces. So the CHR includes drag, which is a rearward force, and the center of effort is the uh, force of the wind on the sails, and so that includes a forward force. So the drag moving in reverse and the center of effort moving forward, the driving force of the sails, that creates a twist and it creates weather helm. Now, there are things that we can do that will reduce weather helm, which in some cases can be very bad. Um, if you end up with an unbalanced helm or a helm that has uh, lee helm, um, then the boat will actually go to leeward, go with the wind, and you know, could go out of control or do a crash jibe. And so things like sailing with too much head sail, um, or maybe even sailing head sail only, um, will create lee helm. Sailing with a deeply reefed main and, you know, say like a Genoa, um, could create lee helm. Pulling the centerboard or the swing keel um, up a little bit, which moves the center of lateral resistance aft, again, that can create lee helm. And so in those conditions, when the boat heals, or if, you know, there's a loss of control of the helm, um, the boat will actually go to leeward. Um, another thing is, you know, let's think about an auto tiller. So if we have the boat on an auto tiller steering the boat and then we're hit by a sudden gust and the boat heels over normally when the boat heels over it will want to go to windward um, it'll it'll want to round up and you know if we're at the helm we can feel that immediately and we might fight it a little bit to control it but generally we're, we're going to let the boat kind of do what it's going to do um, to a point just to keep uh, the boat from going over and to maintain that proper heel angle now, if you have an auto tiller on though, um, the auto tiller is going to try and stay on the course. And so it's going to fight that desire to turn to windward. Um, and so potentially you could cause a capsize of the boat by having your auto tiller on in those extreme conditions. Let's talk for a minute about crew placement or, you know, the placement of human ballast as we call it. Um, so, you know, in normal light wind sailing conditions, you know, having kids down below, taking a nap, you know, whatever, that's totally cool. But if the conditions get dangerous, right? If, you know, the water starts getting rough, the winds are getting gusty, the boat is healing severely, um, then you really need to control where you're placing your human ballast. And so you need to be directing people on your boat of where to sit. Um, and so you wanna keep people on the high side. So you wanna control, help control the heel by using that human ballast to counteract the heel and keep the boat upright. Um, you also want to move some weight more toward the rear. So you don't want people in the cabin. Um, you want to get everybody in the cockpit. And, you know, basically you want to maximize your freeboard. So that's the height of your bow above the waterline. So by moving weight to the back, you're lifting up your bow and you're pushing your stern more into the water. And so that's going to ensure that the boat has the ability to, you know, crash through waves and keep less water from coming onto the decks or even into the cabin uh, over the top. Also, because the stern is very flat, um, that helps stabilize the boat by getting more of the stern into the water. So, you know, you don't wanna have all your weight way, way at the back of the boat, um, but you just wanna, you wanna move it back a little bit so that your stern goes down and your bow comes up. And then again, um, to windward so that you can control the heel angle. So let's talk for a minute about preparations. So when we're preparing a sail, you know, probably the first thing we need to do is check the weather forecast um, so that we're not taking the boat out on maybe like a day where there's a small craft advisory or something like that. We need to understand what kind of weather conditions are forecasted um, and be prepared for those conditions or make a decision not to go out that day. So if we're out on the boat and the weather starts getting rough, the conditions start getting rough, then we need to prepare the boat for those conditions as well. And so a key there is closing up all the hatches. So, you know, my boat, my boat never moves with the forward hatch open, but you know, I do see people sailing um, with the forward hatch open on occasion. Um, so, you know, you wanna close the forward hatch. If it's getting really rough, you wanna put in the companionway board and close the top hatch. And what that'll do is if the boat is uh, laid down on its side, it'll prevent waves from coming into the companionway and, you know, quickly flooding the boat. So, you know, just make sure that if you're in those kinds of conditions that you're doing what you need to do to prepare the boat to sail in those conditions.
The next thing for prep that we want to think about is loading of the boat. So I purposely try to keep my boat as light as possible at all times. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, one, increasing the amount of buoyancy. Um, it keeps the boat higher in the water. Um, but also, if the boat is capsized, if it's on its side, um, then it's also going to keep it higher out of the water. So, you know, I've seen Precision 18s um, that are so heavily loaded that the boat actually sits in the water below the waterline stripe. Um, and again, if, you know, if your boat is heeled over excessively or is capsized, it's going to be lower in the water on its side too. And that's going to allow water to more easily come into the companionway opening. Um, so, you know, we need to think about our loading of the boat and keeping it as light as possible so that the buoyancy that's available, um, we don't decrease that by having too much weight in our boat. Another aspect of prep is practicing those skills um, that might save the boat in a dangerous situation. So, you know, do we know how to go hove to? Have we practiced that? Do we know how to reef the mainsail? We definitely need to practice that so that we're prepared in those rough conditions that, you know, maybe came on suddenly and we didn't anticipate um, to make sure that we can handle those conditions. All right, well, as always, I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.